Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about something known as tholines. Before I explain to you what exactly this is, take a look at this. This is Pluto as portrayed and captured by the New Horizons probe um, only a few years ago. Okay, now we'll take a look at the most recently seen and analyzed object known as Ultima Thule, also by the New Horizons probe. Interesting. Okay, take a look at this. The object known as Triton, one of the moons of Neptune. Huh, there's something somewhat similar about all of these objects. They all have this very unusual shade of brownish red. If you look really closely here, specifically at Pluto, you might realize that this brownish red stuff is like everywhere. Now, this is what we believe is tholines. These tholines are surprisingly ubiquitous. They are present in many different locations around the solar system. They're pretty much almost everywhere where you can find organic matter, matter that's uh, carbon-based. As a matter of fact, Ultima Thule, when we flew by it, did not surprise scientists when they discovered that it was kind of brownish red as well. We expected it to have this color because we thought that just like so many other objects, it was covered in tholines as well. As a matter of fact, when the Huygens probe that you see is landing on Titan here, this is the actual footage that it took, uh, actually discovered tholines even in the atmosphere of this moon. Titan is um, very organic, there's a lot of organic material here, and it's also somewhat brownish as you can see, and we believe that tholines here even form part of the atmosphere. They basically circulate around the moon and they potentially influence its um, temperature. So, okay, these tholins are everywhere, but what exactly are they, and do we have them here on Earth? Well, to answer the second question, no. Um, they actually disappeared, even though Earth used to have a lot of tholins as well. We believe that this brownish stuff disappeared from Earth about 2.4-ish billion years ago. Why, though? What happened? Well, if you know your history of the planet, um, oxygen. Turns out that oxygen essentially destroys these tholines. They um, most likely disappeared and turned into other chemical compounds. And today, many scientists actually believe that these tholines are sort of like the precursors to a lot of organic materials that are needed for developing life. In other words, tholines combined with oxygen and then created all of this material that eventually resulted in a variety of life on the planet. And today we believe that for tholines to form, um, you essentially need to have some nitrogen source, uh, things like methane will do, and then uh, provide it with a lot of energy, such as, for example, um, cosmic radiation or sunlight, which will eventually lead to complex organic molecules and then eventually form these really, really long uh, disordered chains of organic complex molecules. And these chains, these ridiculously complex chains that don't really have a structure per se, eventually form tholines which are normally brownish in color. And this is kind of how we think it formed on Titan. Now originally these were named and discovered by the super famous Carl Sagan who actually performed an experiment with another uh, scientist. This is uh, Kara Bishun, and uh, both of them were essentially working on trying to recreate the early Earth conditions um, in a Cornell laboratory. And what they did was uh, they kind of created these very unfriendly, inhospitable conditions, bombarded with radiation, which resulted in the production of this weird tar-like substance that was brown in color. They actually originally were going to name it Star Tar, which I think has a pretty cool, catchy name but eventually settled on tholine, which is Greek for muddy. And although they weren't really able to create life at the end, they did create uh, this material that is present pretty much everywhere in the solar system. Now, we're not 100% sure if it's exactly the same, but we know it's the same color. We even discovered this stuff uh, on objects like, for example, Europa right here. You can actually see some of the tholines in these cracks. And even around other stars, like for example, this is an image from a star system known as HR4796A. This image is actually known as Eye of Sauron. Uh, you can probably guess why. And the uh, tholines here were detected uh, by the Hubble telescope. And we are pretty sure now that these unusual substances are, well, 
everywhere. They're not just in the solar system, they're also in other star systems. And this is of course very interesting because today we believe that tholins were the precursors of organic matter that then led to life on Earth. And the original experiments showed us that tholins are actually not very difficult to produce as long as there is sunlight, some sort of energy, and maybe things like methane, ethane, or any other nitrogen source. We've also discovered that tholins are really good at scattering UV light, like for example um, on Titan, tholins can uh, scatter UV super super easily and uh, this could potentially protect life as well. So in some sense the existence of tholins early on on Earth may have actually saved life and protected it from various uh, effects from sunlight. We've also discovered tons of weird bacteria here on Earth that actually thrives in tholins. If you put it, uh, those bacteria in tholins, they survive uh, very well inside of these uh, unusual materials and they even prosper in them, as if this is their preferred environment. So all of these signs suggest that tholins were essential for life on Earth early on and it's very likely that these particular tholins may have actually were responsible for kickstarting life to begin with. Now, it's still a speculation, but it's a pretty strong speculation that seems to indicate their importance in life on Earth. Now, because we've seen tholins pretty much everywhere in the solar system by now, and we found them in every single corner, this can potentially suggest another really important thing. Life could actually technically exist in many different regions of our own solar system and of course other star systems simply based on this very simple observation. Even objects like Pluto right here may potentially be um, filled with different types of bacteria that could have formed here, similar to how they formed on Earth. Now, this is not to say that we're absolutely certain that even that these are the same tholines, that it's the same type of a molecule, but based on the color observations, based on the similarity of this with what we created here on Earth, the actual similarities are just kind of difficult to ignore. So we do need to actually launch a mission, hopefully soon, uh, to an object that has a lot of tholines, study them in a lot more detail, and make sure that we actually can study uh, these tholines chemically in order to establish if this is the same stuff that we produce on Earth. And if so, there is definitely going to be a correlation between uh, tholines that used to be present on the planet and how they may have influenced the creation of life on the planet, but most importantly, how this is maybe the sign for us to look for when we're looking for other planets out there and trying to find life on them. Because if it's all kind of because of this unusual brownish stuff, it's actually kind of easy to see. We've already seen it around one star and I'm sure we're going to see it around other objects as well. So maybe just maybe tholins is actually that sign that we needed to look for and once we discover life somewhere else we'll most likely be able to find even more of it out there. But most importantly with the confirmation that Ultima Thule is also reddish brown and covered in tholins, all of this kind of suggests to us that um, for all we know life is like everywhere in the solar system, we just haven't really looked hard enough. We do need to land on one of these objects, we need to kind of drill into it and look carefully. Now interestingly Mars doesn't seem to actually have any tholines, most likely because it was filled with oxygen as well at some point in history and oxygen destroyed these tholines. But objects like Ultima Thule, Pluto and a lot of other moons around the solar system could be essential for us to study in the future because maybe we'll discover life there at some point. Anyway on that note, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who wants to learn more about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.